Hey fellow tankers, Mobius Y here with another video for World of Tanks console. Today's video is the much overdue review on the 113, the tier 10 Chinese heavy tank that we have here in console. Before we really get into this, I'm just going to give a little forewarning. I'm going to be cursing a fair bit in this review. So if you don't really like that sort of thing, or you're offended by it, or you have little ones nearby that don't want to hear it, then by all means, turn this video off and watch it a different time, or just don't watch it at all. I'll leave that up to you. So while this first game goes on in the background, is the 113 a good tank? Well, in synopsis, yeah, it's a good tank. The problem is I can't get a decent fucking game in this tank to save my fucking life. <laughs> I don't think I have ever consistently done this bad in a tier 10 tank game after game. Not since I was a complete newbie and had tanks like the FE215B and the E50M as my first two tier 10s. And this is like four years ago. I just, I cannot play well in this tank. Um, so, is that is that a fault of the tank? Absolutely not. It's definitely user error. I just suck in the damn thing. Well, to be fair, I just suck at the game anyway, so there's that too. But um, the 113 in general, it's a good tank. It's very flexible. Uh, this really good mobility that it has, which is really its major saving grace, uh, makes it extremely adaptable to changing events on the battlefield, similar to what you would expect from, say, a T110E5 or an FA215B, you know, those other kind of medium-heavy kind of things. Uh, even something like an IS-7 wouldn't be as good at it because an IS-7 has really crappy ground resistances, so it's actually not as mobile as you might think, and it's definitely a lot more adaptable than the super heavies like the E100, the Type 5 heavy, and the Panzer 7 and the mouse because they're just so bloody slow. However, with that extra mobility, there's a lot of sacrifice made in terms of armor. Uh, while the 113 is well armored in key hardpoint areas, namely the front of the turret and its upper front plate as well, it has glaring weak points. Its lower plate is the most obvious one. It is super thin and it is just so very poorly sloped that it's easy to penetrate um, except at the most extreme of angles, and it's so thin, it can just punch right through. Uh, the top of the turret is also a pretty glaring weak point between the two hatches on the top of the turret, and the hatches themselves are pretty obvious points for somebody to shoot them. They're a lot harder to shoot for somebody from farther away, uh, but in a close-up brawling match, like if you're face-hugging an enemy tank, like an enemy 113 or an enemy E5 or an enemy IS-7 or whatever, um, it, it's pretty easy for them to just point upwards and be able to nail you in those hatches and chip away at your HP. But aside from that, uh, a couple other things that the 113 is good at. The gun's not too bad. Uh, it's fairly accurate. It has, you know, okay penetration for a tier 10 heavy tank. And um, the gun handling isn't too terrible. It's actually better than a few other heavy tanks. Not all of them. There's some that definitely better have better gun handling. FE215B, hands down, the best gun handling out of Tier 10 heavy tanks, so it's not as good as that. Uh, T110E5 will have a bit better gun handling as well. And the Chieftain, definitely. Uh, but other things, the IS-7, uh, the German heavies, and um, what's the other one? It, it's more on par to, uh, I would say, on par to an IS-4. Uh, where the dispersion might not be that great while moving, uh, but the aim time isn't so terrible and the total accuracy isn't so terrible as to completely make the gun complete trash. So, all these combine together to actually make a pretty well-rounded machine that players who are good and are good with the tank, um, can they could really make it shine for themselves. Um, one of the big advantages that the 113 has is it has a 440 alpha gun, so it can out-trade with a few other heavy tanks, namely the T110E5, the FE215B, the Chieftain. You know, tanks that only do... A, the, the, the other heavy tanks that only do 400 alpha damage every shot, uh, and every other medium tank except the, one, the Chinese 121, it will out-trade with them shot for shot. However, most of these other tanks that it can out-trade can reload faster, so if you're able to force them into an engagement where you are simply firing shot for shot at each other, uh, you could potentially uh, outplay them and just take them down. But um, such it's, it's a little trickier to do because, as I said, the weak points on this tank, they're, they're very obvious. People will just shoot them uh, without, without abandon. 
Now, as you can see here, I'm getting some troll bounces like on my sides and even my rear, uh, but that is not reliable. The 113 does have some fairly decent side armor. It's 80 millimeters, um, most of it. So you do get some troll bounces, but it is far from reliable. So this is kind of what it's like in a, in a game with the 113 for me. I only got seven penetrations, six penetrations, sorry, for 2,600 damage. No tanks destroyed. This is actually a better game. Uh, in the 113 that I would play. Honestly, the, the total average for me is getting maybe a whopping four or five penetrations so that I could wrap up, so that I can rack up, uh, you know, possibly 1600 damage or something like that. There's been several games where I only get three penetrations. I've dropped goose eggs in this tank. Um, it just does not seem to click with me whatsoever. Um, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's still a decent tank, but it's clearly, it's clearly just not for me. Uh, so if you're looking for something that is pretty mobile, is low profile, that has a fairly good camera, it's it's basically a heavy medium. Uh, it has a medium tanks kind of camouflage, sort of, because it's such a small sort of heavy tank, and it's fairly mobile. You'll keep up with slower medium tanks, like for example the the Motherland. I know it's not the best comparison because the Motherland's tier eight, uh, but it's about as mobile as a, as a Motherland, and the Motherland's a medium tank. So other slower medium tanks like that, the 113 has no problem keeping pace with them. Uh, it's it's very quick. And that's what, one of the big things that I liked about it. So first things first, let's take a look at the in-garage hard stats of the 113, looking at a few dist different aspects here. So the package itself, you get an engine that gives you 750 horsepower. This is partially why the 113 is so quick. Uh, you get quite a little bit of horsepower. And the tank itself isn't terribly heavy. I think it's only about 50 tons. Uh, Somewhere between 40, 45 and 50 tons, if I recall right. Um, Tanks.gg is down right now, so I wasn't able to check the ex exact value. Um, so that's part of the reason why it boots around quite a bit. It will struggle going uphill. Your speed will drop significantly, going maybe 20 kilometers at best. Uh, very often, even on slight inclines going uphill. So that is a bit of an issue with the 113, but on favorable to terrain, even just like a slight uphill slope, a very gradual one, you can go at least 30 kilometers an hour. And on flat terrain or even downhill or uh, hard terrain like, like uh, concrete and asphalt and stuff like that, uh, you can easily kick it up to 40, 45 kilometers an hour uh, very, very easily. There's the rare chance where you'll see it get to the max speed of 50 kilometers an hour. You pretty much have to be going downhill for that. Uh, now for the gun of the 113, uh, this is actually a pretty solid gun. I don't think it's as good as the gun on, say, the T10 or the IS-4 or the fully upgraded ST, ST-1 or STI, uh, but it's still pretty solid. 5.5 rounds per minute with a gun rammer and vents for equipment and brothers in arms for a crew skill. I had that reload all the way down to exactly 9 seconds, so it reloads decently well. You'll still have some tanks at tier 10, heavy tanks in particular, that reload just a second or two faster, like the 215B and the E5, but as I said several times, you will outtrade them uh, shot for shot. The penetration is 349 for the, sorry, 249, reading is hard, for the standard AP rounds. Uh, that's kind of on the low side for a tier 10 heavy tank, but I mean, it's more than enough to hit the same usual weak points that you would uh, with just about any tier 10 tank that isn't a tank destroyer. 340 penetration with the heat round. That's a really good heat round. Uh, not amazing but i mean that, that's pretty that's pretty solid that is extremely respectable a lot of heat rounds have about that much penetration and you have 68 penetration with the he rounds pretty good uh, he penetration to be totally honest the alpha damage for the ap and heat rounds is 440 as i said more than a 215b e5 or chieftain or any of those other tanks that only do 400 damage uh, more than any medium tank except the 121 at tier 10 uh, shot for shot. Uh, HE damage is averaging at 530, so it can be worth it to load up an HE round for very softly armored targets, uh, namely paper thin TDs, especially waffles, and sometimes artillery. Uh, basic gun handling, the aiming time is 2.7. That's better than a few heavy tanks that have 2.9 or worse aim time. Uh, but not as good as the fairly average 2.29 that you see on a, on a lot of tanks in the higher tiers. And the accuracy is 0 0.36. That's actually pretty spot on uh, middle of the road uh, average for overall accuracy when fully aimed in. 
Now for a heavy tank, not only is this tank quick, but it's pretty maneuverable. The track traverse speed is 36 degrees per second, and that can be improved with clutch braking uh, to make this thing help maneuver around the battlefield a lot better. Uh, the turret traverse speed is 26 degrees per second, which is actually quite a bit lower than the track traverse speed. It's almost 30% slower than the track traverse of the tank. Nevertheless, if you are turning them both in the same direction, uh, you can bring your gun around on your target very quickly. And the basic rating for the turret armor, in the front it's rated at 290, but that's in a select location. We'll take a look at that a little bit later. And on the sides it's 180, and in the rear it's 80. So, sporting some very good frontal turret armor here. Uh, the total view range is, of course, 400 meters. Very, very normal for tier 10 tanks. And the signal range, which doesn't really matter, 750 meters. Very, very normal for tier 10 tanks to have high signal range such as that. So let's move on to things like equipment and supplies and crew skills that I had when I was playing the 113 to make it not work for me. <laughs> uh, taking a look at supplies here, I went in carrying 21 AP rounds, standard AP rounds. Um, this thing doesn't carry a huge amount of ammo, but it, it does carry uh, 34 shots. So that's more than you'll be able to spit off in a single game because chances are the game will... Uh, the game will end before you can even shoot all these off, or you'll just be dead before you can shoot all these off. 21 in standard AP rounds, more than enough. 11, H, uh, 11 heat rounds, excuse me, to deal with situations where you're facing a super heavy tank, like for example a Type 4 or Type 5 heavy, or even a mouse or something, or a Panzer 7. And you just want to make sure that you can chip away at their HP. And high explosive rounds, I was carrying more for a while. I was carrying about 3 or 4 for quite some time, but I dropped it down to 2, just so I could carry uh, 1 extra AP and 1 extra heat round on top of what I already had. For consumables, very standard for my tier 10 loadouts, large repair kit, large first aid kit, and automatic fire extinguisher, not only making it so that I can repair or heal any of my damaged modules or injured crew, and instantly put out a fire if this thing catches fire, which it will do, but also adding passive bonuses, reducing the chances of my crew being injured, reducing the chance of catching fire, as well as more quickly repairing my damaged modules. The equipment that I used fairly standard for a tier 10 heavy tank when I roll out in one these days. Large caliber tank gun rammer, improved ventilation to also decrease the reload time, and a vertical stabilizer to help with that not so great dispersion when this tank is moving. Despite this tank having a pretty decent aim time of 2.7, uh, the dispersion while moving is pretty poor, so you want to reduce that as much as possible, get, uh, giving it less time to aim in. Vents will also help with that, so you're kind of getting the best of, best of both worlds, excuse me, with vents in the mix there. And as for crew, uh, for suggested equipment, excuse me, before we get to the crew skills, for other suggested equipment, I would recommend either an enhanced gun laying drive if the aim time really bothers you and you just want to be able to snap your shots off a little bit quicker when you are aiming in, or possibly even coated optics because this tank, uh, it, it's really, really nice being able to uh, spot medium tanks that would otherwise outspot you because this this heavy is fairly low profile compared to other things, especially this, the super heavies at tier 10. Um, but if you like being able to spot your own targets as well, coded optics might be just what you want on this tank. And for crew skills, when I was playing the 113, uh, when I transferred this crew into the IS-2, I already had repairs, sixth sense, and mentor trained. When I was playing the IS-2 to grind towards the 110, I trained brothers in arms on the crew to give it an overall performance boost. And this completed the four skill, the four essential skills on this crew. When I was playing the 110, I trained, or sorry, when I was playing, yes, the 110, I trained clutch braking to increase the track traverse of the heavy tanks as I went down the line. And when I was playing the Wheezy 111-14, I trained the crew in safe stowage uh, before transferring it to the 113 because these Chinese tanks, these Chinese heavy tanks are pretty prone to getting ammo racked. And I could train a new skill, which I didn't start yet because I'm going to be transferring this crew pretty shortly. I would suggest camouflage because uh, both the Wheezy 111-14 and the 113, as I've said numerous times, uh, they're not terribly tall for heavy tanks, so camouflage will make it more difficult for things to spot you, especially at longer range. So now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the armor viewer, and we're actually going to use the in-game one because I think at the time of recording this, tanks.gg is down, so we're not going to look at specific detailed uh, armored values at certain angles, but we'll be you'll be able to get 
get a good idea of the armor layout of the 113 uh, from the in-game armor viewer. So the very first thing you will probably notice is that there's these thin purple strips directly above the tracks in the 1 to 21 millimeter range. These are actually 20 millimeter thick strips of spaced armor on top of the 80 millimeters of side armor on this side of the 113. So you can get some seriously troll bounces uh, with those with that armor combination going on there. As we as we go further down, you'll you'll see that uh, obviously the very rear of the tank and the turret itself is extremely vulnerable. Some very thin armor in those areas, so it's pretty prone to module damage if you get if you take a shot in those locations. Uh, but the side armor of the tank itself, of the hull itself, behind the tracks, you've got 80 millimeters of side armor. That's not terrible. This tank's pretty decent at side scraping because of that. Uh, and, and it's very tricky to get that angle down pat, but once you get it, it's uh, it's pretty effective. You can still get shot in, say, the lower plate of the drive wheel if it's exposed too much and uh, still take damage that way. But apart from that, it can, uh, it can bait people into shooting you, giving you time to back up and shoot them back. Uh, for some big damage and as we're continuing down the armor layout here you can see as we get to the front of the turret it is pretty well armored uh hull down is this tank's best friend easily but uh, due to the very poor gun depression of this tank it only has five degrees of gun depression you got to do it behind things like piles of rubble or rocks or uh, even dead tanks and things like that because if you're trying to use hills uh, especially um, hills that you'll often play something like, say, a Conqueror or a Chieftain or an M103 or any of those kinds of tanks on. Um, you know, those tanks that are, that really excel at hill fighting, uh, you will be completely unable to do so in the 113 just because it completely lacks the gun depression to do so. The other thing you might notice is that the entire front of the tank uh, is rated between 91 to 121 millimeters. Uh, the upper front plate, if I recall right, is 120 millimeters, and the lower plate, I believe, is 100 millimeters, but I could very well be wrong. Either way, it doesn't matter. The lower plate is sloped so poorly that it's very easy for anything at tier 10, and it, even tier 9 with, with a fully upgraded gun to just punch right through that if they have a shot at it. Unless they are shooting at an extreme downward angle, that is your biggest weak point when you are in a full-on face-to-face uh, -face brawl with any other tank. So you need to protect that as much as possible because not only uh, is it easy to get damaged there, but you can suffer some crew damage, namely your driver, but your ammo rack can be damaged through the lower plate as well, and your fuel tanks could be, or sorry, not your ammo rack, your fuel tanks could be damaged and the tank could be set on, set on fire. Uh, so it's, it's tough to do. The upper front plate is fairly strong, but it relies strictly on sloping more so than actual armor thickness because it's only 120 millimeters thick. So if somebody is above you and they're able to get their gun down to shoot at your upper front plate, it'll be a lot flatter, it'll be a lot thinner and easy for them to penetrate. A similar thing can be said is if you're on level ground, but you back up against, say, a cliff wall or you back up so that your ass end is lifting up uh, on, a, on a hillside, that will flatten out your front even more and make it even easier for them to penetrate you. So let's take a look at some images where the modules and crew are located on the 113 using images from wotinfo.net. So here in the first image you can see the very front of the 113. As I said, fuel tanks very easy to get damaged and set on fire from the front, especially in the lower plate. I made a mistake there saying ammo rack. Um, I meant the fuel tank, that's my bad. Um, the driver is also very prone to injury. He sits just in front of the turret on the left side. Uh, be, uh, right beneath the little driver's hatch there. He does get knocked out quite a bit, so it's very helpful in the later stages if you have a really good Chinese crew in this tank. Uh, have them trained in pain tolerance and possibly jack-of-all-trades and bring a large med kit into battle. That is my highest recommendation. And of course, the green area on the hatches denotes that that is actually a weak point. Um, it's very noticeable and very very easy for people to nail those repeatedly uh, when you are face-hugging, so try to get your gun barrel lifted up and in the way blocking their shot with it. Um, it'll they'll have a tougher time hitting those from longer ranges. Uh, the left side, as you can see, the ammo rack is very exposed on the left side of the 113, and it is a big zone where it can get hit from. Um, so it's very possible to have this damage taking a shot from the front. If it's a shot that goes through, say, your drive wheel or one of the first running wheels on your tracks, it can still damage the ammo rack that's sitting behind that area. Uh, somebody getting fully on your side could also damage it too just by shooting right beneath the front edge of your turret. Of course, they could also just shoot you in the left side of your turret. The gunner sits in the front, commander sits right behind him, basically behind the hatch. Uh, 
and behind the commander is where the radio is though if you really want to hurt this thing and uh, mess with it either hit the commander or hit the gunner and near the rear of the hull there is more fuel tanks beneath the turret and even behind that you can hit the engine deck to cripple this thing's mobility so it's basically the entire back half of this tank's hull can be damaged and set on fire either through the fuel tank or the engine the rear of the tank the entire ass end can damage the engine deck if you get a shot in there uh, the right side of the turret beneath that second hatch can actually cause ammo rack damage and force somebody to use their repair kit or cripple this thing's reload speed and thus make it uh, very ineffective in a battle situation. So take your pick. Do you want to try and cripple this thing's mobility and set it on fire, or do you want to cripple its reload rate? One of the two. And then on the right side, again, you have lots of ammo rack on the right side of the hull beneath the front of the turret, damageable even from the front with a shot through the tracks area. Uh, more ammo rack on the right side of the turret, and the loader sits right in front of that ammo rack area there, too. So if you get uh, a shot into the right side of this tank's turret, there's a very good possibility that you'll either damage their ammo rack or injure the loader and just cripple this things reload speed uh, same with on the left side you've got fuel tank and engine deck covering pretty much the entire back half of this thing's hull making it very prone to fire chance uh, from shots going into its ass end so you, <laughs> to sum it up you just need to try and keep your front towards as many guns as possible to so that you can get some troll bounces or possibly even force people to shoot you in your upper front plate or the face of your turret as opposed to hitting you in those very vulnerable modules so that's that sums it up for a detailed look. We'll take a look at the second game here on Steeps. Um, again, this this tank like I I don't really I can't really wrap my head around it. This tank isn't a bad tank by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, it's it's versatile in the fact that you know it's it's mobile, it's maneuverable. The gun it has isn't complete shit, and um, you know it can it could spot it could semi scout for itself or other people. Uh, especially if you mounted something like coded optics or if you just had a higher trained crew and you had things like uh, recon and situational awareness and camouflage and all that jazz trained. Uh, but would I recommend this tank for everybody? Absolutely not. Um, I have gotten messages from plenty of people who've seen me playing this thing, about four or five different people who've seen me playing this thing, uh, saying that uh, they were happy to see me playing it and it's their favorite tank and this, that, and the other thing. And if the tank works for them, then you know, props, props to those players because they're clearly just way better than I am because I could just do nothing but struggle with this tank. I didn't dislike it by any stretch of the imagination. I just wound up hating playing it because I could never do any good with it. Um, it is a very unforgiving tank to play. If you mess up, then you will mess up bad. You will wind up with uh, injured crew or damaged modules or just a huge chunk of HP missing or what have you. Uh, it's just... It's it's really hard to nail it down to one specific thing. So you have to know where you want to take this tank, where this tank will work, where this tank will really shine. You have to put it you have to put it in those good positions all the time, and you have to play it pseudo perfectly uh, in any given situation in order to try to keep yourself alive for as long as possible, so you can chip away at enemy HP pools uh, with your big ass gun. Now, of course, that being said, this gun isn't the biggest in the in the game. Th something like an IS-7 or any of the German tier 10 heavy tanks, or even some, or even several tier 9 tanks, they will do more damage per shot than you. Any of the TDs will do more damage per shot than you will. Uh, in fact, uh, you'll still lose a huge chunk of HP to to pretty much any of the tier 10 TDs. So, don't think that you have the biggest gun in the in the in the schoolyard because you don't uh it's just you you are better at trading than many other tanks at similar tier especially any of the any of the medium tanks because um the only other medium tank that does the same amount of damage as this thing right now is the 121 because it sports um not the same gun but a, a different variant of of a 122 millimeter gun so apart from that you will l trade any other medium tank so keep that in mind if you find yourself uh, get squaring off in a one-on-one -on -one against certain medium tanks so this game here on steeps um, just getting myself in a position here that this is a friendly dead object 140 so I figure I'm going to use him to kind of protect myself a little bit uh, getting a, a nice bounce off the front from the chieftain down below he's got an emil 2 with him there trying to get a shot off at the top of the chieftain's turret no go there unfortunately uh, this gun will not 
shoot like despite the point three six accuracy, this gun doesn't really shoot terribly straight all the time. So you'll find that you uh, you do miss some shots. Um, it it can be kind of hard to line up some shots due to the fact that uh, as you can see, the reticule gets pretty huge at the slightest movement. So it can be really tough to line up shots that you need to get quickly because it just takes a while to aim in. It doesn't have the greatest aim time, but it also doesn't have the worst. Uh, but uh, with that, with the dispersion values it has, it can be very tricky to get it. So took a shot from, a, from another Chieftain that snuck up on us. Uh, this game was pretty much World of Chieftains. <laughs> I think there was about uh, three on the enemy team and two on our team, so easily one-sixth of the game is just Chieftains. Uh, putting a shot into the front through the track of this Chieftain, also getting some HP damage, getting my fourth damaging shot this game. We are in such a bad situation right now. Going to try and line up and get one more shot off on this Chieftain, but I line it up super terribly, and it just shoots into the dirt. So I fucked that up, and that's pretty much it for this game because at, the, at this stage we are surrounded, and I'm getting pushed in by an Emil too. So I get finished off there. And uh, so I finished off that game with four penetrations and 1672 total damage done. This has honestly been the the norm for me while playing this tank. And um, I'm pretty sure it's just a me thing because it's definitely it's definitely not the tank. Like it, every tank in this game uh, can do good if played well, and I just can't seem to play it well. So uh, pretty much, if if I haven't done it by the time that this video is public, um, then I'm doing it right when this video goes up. I'm going to be selling this tank and going back to the Wheezy 111 Model 14 at Tier 9. Now, when doing the Chinese tech tree. Um, if you can't decide between doing the heavies or the mediums first, go down the heavy line first. I cannot stress this enough. The top gun of the 113 is the 122mm 60-122T. That is the module name for the gun that is used on the 113 Tier 10 heavy tank. And this is the exact same gun that you get on the final package of the Wheezy 120. So that will make this final package upgrade on the Tier 9 Wheezy 120 medium tank completely free of charge XP wise and by doing the heavy line first you also get several engine upgrades and other gun upgrades that will just make doing the entire medium line so much easier they will make it much less of a grind if you do the medium tank line first and you have done pretty much no Chinese tanks previously even light tanks which have similar engine upgrades to some of the medium tanks the Wheezy 120 will be an absolute fucking nightmare for you because these final three packages uh, on the the final three packages on the Weezy 120 cost anywhere between 40 to 60,000 XP to unlock each and that's before you even get fully upgraded so that should sum it up for the review on the 113 as I tried to summarize at the very beginning of this video is the tank good yeah it, it, of course it's good it, every tank in this game can be good except for maybe the challenger but would I recommend this tank for everybody? Fuck no, I wouldn't. This is a very tough tank to play and do well in. There are definitely people out there who are better than me who can make this tank really sing all the time. For me, it was just a fucking nightmare. I like the tank, I just loathed playing it. So there, there's no way I'm going to be keeping this thing in my garage. Uh, at the very least, if you do wish to go down the Chinese heavy tank line, if you if their um, if their playstyle interests you or, you, or you just want to try them out for yourself, at the very least, get the Wheezy 111 Model 14 fully upgraded because that tank is not only a monster, but when we get the next tier 10 Chinese heavy tank, the Wheezy 111 5A, it will branch off the Wheezy 111 Model 14, and that will probably be a better heavy tank all around um, for any player than the 113. That, so that's just my recommendation. Uh, get the 113 if you if you want to give it a shot and see if it works for you. So that should sum it up for today's tank review. I hope you found it informative and helpful. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to the channel if you would like to see more World of Tanks console content. I try to upload a new video every Friday. And don't forget to click the notification bell icon to let you know when I have uploaded a new video every time. This has been Mobius Y for World of Tanks console. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on the battlefield. Happy tanking.